night as we share in scripture and song. Let it glorify your name. May your presence and beauty be found in every note, and may the words that are sung reach the hearts of your people so that we will draw closer to you. Let our time together be a witness to your love and allow your spirit to guide us so that we might be instruments of your peace as we proclaim your glory with joyful voices. We love you. Amen. In the 19th century, traveling preachers would roam around the countryside, having sometimes week-long or weekend-long tent revivals, if you will, and people from miles around would come and bring their tents and watch these men preach. And music was a large part of this event, but you didn't necessarily have hymnals to pass out to these folks to just show up from all over the place. And a lot of them should read music. So what you would do is pick songs that had some sort of repetitive aspect to it or a call and response. A good example would be one that we're not doing today is give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It's good for my grandmother. You know what the next three lines are. It's good enough for me. Songs like that would be easily sung by large groups of people without music and uh, were very effective and were some of the most fun songs in the whole world to do. So, these children have been working very hard and we will now present to you our camp meeting concert.
your brethren in love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 23 to 24. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. For as the body is one and has many, many members, but all the members of that one body, beginning many, are one body, so also is in Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are gathered here this evening amongst the tent so that we might share in fellowship and in song to give testimony to the word of God and to praise God's holy and righteous name. My prayer is that we will leave this place changed in such a way that only God would be glorified. In the New Testament, the word disciple is used to describe the people who are committed to following Jesus Christ. Do I have any followers of Jesus Christ in the building tonight? You see, being a disciple of Jesus requires more from us than just turning up for a church service. God is meant to have the central place in our lives. My dear people, sitting in a sanctuary no more makes you a Christian than sitting in a hen house makes you a chicken. <laughs> Being a disciple of Jesus is more than reading your Bible. More than reading your Bible just once in a while and when you need something, lifting up a prayer to our great God. It requires a relationship with God. A God who loves each one of us. Following Christ is meant to be the central purpose of our lives, and to be a true disciple of Jesus requires real commitment. It is an ongoing journey that lasts our whole life long. We do not have to do it alone. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So it is with Christ.
Is it me or does it seem that there is a bit of joy missing in the average life? As I stand before you with this incredible choir of angelic voices, I want you to know that I am so happy that you are here. But in all honesty, I have to say that sometimes your joy doesn't always appear on your face. Sometimes you do not look happy. Can you look happy for me, church? Much better, much better. Now, all that said, our scripture tonight didn't say nothing about happiness. It spoke of joy. Believe it or not, these two things are very different. Happiness and joy. You know, we can have joy mixed with unhappiness in our life. But joy is not a recommendation. If we look to the Bible in Philippians, the fourth chapter, we see rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I didn't hear you, church. Rejoice. Much better. I believe the biblical formula for joy is this, to combine gratitude, humility, forgiveness, faith, hope, patience, and love. Yet to leave out resentment, anger, fear, worry, greed, jealousy, pride, and complaining, which we don't do, do we, church? Never. This is my challenge for you tonight, to cultivate joy in your life. Look beyond your current situation. See God at work throughout all time. Participate in the work of God. Joy comes in knowing God and helping others to come to know that same love of God. And finally, invest yourself in others. We were created to be in relationship, relationship with our Creator God and relationship with one another. Happy is the one whose hope is in the Lord our God for joy comes in the morning.
and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm 7, verse 17. O oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. Psalm 47, verse 1. Be exalted, O oh Lord, in your own strength. We will sing and praise your power. Psalm 21, verse 13. Clap your hands, O oh people. In worship we praise God, and in praising God we worship. Rejoicing is not optional for us as Christians. It is essential to our Christian life. Those who struggle to know joy are in desperate need of God's reviving work. Without the reviving power and presence of God, there can be no spiritual life or vitality. If we are to live, truly live as God created us to live, we must praise the one who created us. We must praise the one who gave us life. God has brought revival in the past, and God will bring revival again. The question is, will we come together now to seek God's face, and to praise God's holy name. How are we praising God with our lives? How are we praising God with our relationships? How are we praising God with our worship? Clap your hands, all you peoples, and shout to God with the voice of triumph. Praise the Lord. Do you ever yearn to make a difference in the world to know that you have done something significant in your life? Do you ever wonder, why am I still here? 
I know Miss Mary Cunningham has asked that question several times. And I keep telling her, because I need you. I tell you there is no greater satisfaction than to know you have been used by God to touch someone's life. Perhaps not just for a season, but for an eternity. Today, Jesus calls us to consider, along with the original followers, who we really are in Christ. You see, in Matthew 5, Jesus saw a crowd, and he went to teach them. He told them, you are the salt, you are the light of the world. You are a city on top of a hill which cannot be hidden. And nobody, nobody lights a candle and places it under his bed. He said, people light a candle and put it on a lampstand so that it can be seen and that everyone in the house can be guided. Being salt means that there must be a lot of unsavory challenges in the world. Being the light means there must be plenty of darkness all around. When a candle is lit, it provides guidance like a road map so that people will not miss their way. Jesus reminds us to live salty lives, helping to preserve our world. And then he reminds us to let our light shine. Like salt, light has a number of functions. It guides and it illuminates. We are called. We are called to guide people to the light of the world. Here Jesus calls us that, but in another passage, in John, he calls himself the light. Jesus is like the sun and we like the moon. The sun is a source of light, but the moon has no light source of its own. It merely reflects the light of the sun. So here we are, church. We are the moon to God's sun. And may our light shine before all people that they may see the good works and glorify God in heaven. Spirit, 
which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am in I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Church, how many of you got dressed today? I mean, truly dressed. I see the clothing. But I wonder how many of you dressed your spirit for this very day. Paul sets the scene for us that there is a battle that is raging around us. And should we enter into our day without being fully dressed, what might happen? It does not say, put on your hat some days, or make sure you carry your sword on the days that you think you might encounter a need for it. But Paul says to put on the full armor of God, because without the full armor of God, there is no need to strap on your boots at all. I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, that every morning as you draw your first breath to begin to pray, this armor might surround you. Though Christ has won in victory, make no mistake, we battle every day. a need for water. How many of you have been thirsty? How many of you have experienced a thirst that you did not even realize how thirsty you were? God is the ever-flowing fountain, that ever-flowing refreshment that begins and never ends. Let us never be thirsty again. Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, 
for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead, climbed up to a sycamore tree to see me, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked and looked and saw him and said to him, The key is make haste to come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made it and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. But he has stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from false accusation, I restore for whole. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he is also the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save, which was lost. Luke 19, verse 1 through 10. Zacchaeus was a and a wee little man. He climbed up in to see what he could see. Say it with confidence now. To see what he could see. There you go. Zacchaeus was a wee little man in stature. But Zacchaeus was not a wee little man in character. We too are called to look for every glimpse of Christ along our path. No matter how high the tree is we have to climb to look for Christ and to invite him in. May we too be wee little people. Have you ever hit rock bottom? Maybe it was because you began your foundation on shifting sands. May you now build upon the rock.
death, denying ungood, ungodliness, and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us for every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, sell us for all good work. Titus 2:11 through 14. It is Christ in me that greets the Christ in you. It is in this time that we recognize what it is that brings us to this place this very evening with these angels who have shared such beautiful music with us to remind us of God's grace, that God has been calling us long before we ever knew we were alive, to then court us in a relationship to where we might grow in our love and our respect and in our relationship. As we come together to hear the Word of God, the gift of Scripture, and as we come together to listen to the Scripture come to life through music, Make no mistake, it is Christ's sacrifice that Christ lived and died and rose again that we have everlasting life with God our Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, do I have any followers of Jesus Christ in the building tonight? Now, I know it's been a little bit of time since I asked you last, 
but the joy has fallen from your face. Do I have any followers of Jesus Christ in the tent tonight? <laughs> Clap your hands and shout for joy, for God has saved his people. Know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is with us in this place, but not just here. God goes with us from this place to share God's love and grace and light and love with all we encounter. Go in peace. Oh, Lord.